next thing I gotta get done is powering up the ECU, which is kind of straightforward. Actually, I haven't even taken this loom apart. So this is the uh, power loom for the AEM. Um, I haven't looked at it in a while since I've been so focused on the engine bay itself. But uh, luckily for me, I got um, I got, a, got in touch with someone on Instagram that uh, has a similar build, and I was able to bounce questions off them. They're able to just answer me directly, tell me you know which which power or which wires are uh, switch 12 volt, constant 12 volt. You know where to do grounds, how to run some things. You know if you how to jump certain wires to get a fuel pump to run, and a few other things how to get extra 12 volt sources in the engine bay, which has been a lot of help. Uh, JZX Jake on Instagram has been helping me out tremendously. That's the person who's helped me out the most on this build. When I have a random question, I can just shoot him over a message and he answers me kind of quickly, which is nice to um, not meet, but uh, become friends with uh, people in the industry and people doing the same builds as you. You guys can bounce ideas, bounce questions and answers off each other. It, it helps out a lot, which since I've started my build, I've had people asking me questions which I've been able to pass forward any information I've gained from doing this, which is, it's pretty cool. Which, uh, it's what the whole car community is about, which I like it a lot. So uh, with, with his advice, I'm able to do this pretty quickly. So I know where I'm gonna have my switch 12 volt, constant 12 volt, and then I'll have to run my own ground. So first thing I had to do is uh, un unbundle this whole thing, see what I got, and uh, split it up and go from there. All right, don't mind the bright light, sorry about that. So this is basically gonna be about powering the AEM. So I'm trying to break this down so if anyone's making their own harness, they can kind of follow different episodes, see what's going on or give some insight. Maybe you're thinking about doing it, you're a little intimidated, you know, help show that, you know, it's possible. Just break it down, go slow, see what you gotta do and uh, one step at a time. So this is my uh, power bundle. It comes already like this in this flying lead harness. So it's nine wires. So it comes with a um, manual. So next thing we'll do is uh, we'll check out the manual. So right here. So you see how it says uh, power ground bundle? So easy, they're making it easy. So it's telling you what each one needs. So here we have uh, direct battery power. This one is gonna be switched and then ground. So here's one thing about the ground. If you didn't have a manual, I would have been totally mind fucked. So on the cables it says power ground, and to me that makes no sense. Is, is it power? Is it ground? Is it chicken? Is it fish? I don't know. But luckily you come here, you read it, it tells you it's for ground. And But that's only eight wires, and the one that's missing is this one right here, which is switch volt, switch 12 volt, which I've, I have everything figured out where it needs to go. So now what I need is I need a ground. So I'm trying to figure out where to do it. And remember I bought the electrical diagram for my car? Well, comes in handy because, let me see where we're at. Hold on, I got it here somewhere. I was looking at it. So this shows you where all the grounding points are in the car too. Let's talk about being helpful. So what I did was I came through here this page right here. So it says anything with a triangle, location of a ground point, look through here. So I have my ECU right there by the glove box and lo and behold, G, <laughs> the G spot is a grounding point. So now it looks like there's a bunch of uh, relays right there in that corner, which is gonna be down under there. So what I have to do is start taking it apart and I'll, hopefully I should find the ground in there. So. Let me pull it apart, see what we find. All right, so I found the uh, ground spot in the passenger side footwell, exactly where the manual said it was gonna be. So I found it, uh, unfortunately it still has paint on it, so what I gotta do now is gonna take some sandpaper, rough it up, I'm gonna run some wires from the AEM all the way down to the ground, and uh, ground it out and then go for the power wires next. That's step number one. All right, after sweating my ass off, Using the Dremel, a little bit of uh, prying. Ah, show you guys how it came out. Sucks you didn't get to see the before, but you can see that's the ground location. You can see behind it now it's bare metal. I had to use uh, 
that to get some gain access to it. Now we got bare metal. I'll put the uh, grounds behind this ground. So the new ECU grounds go directly to the chassis and then this ground to go right over those grounds. So set. Now all I have to do is uh, crimp, run some wires down to here. Pretty straightforward. All right, unfortunately I don't have the eyelets to uh, <laughs> eyelets to make the grounds to the chassis. So I'm gonna have to skip the ground, go to the power. So looking at my uh, manual here, so we have three that connect to permanent battery power. So I have two wires that provide permanent battery power. I'll switch them, I'll do two to one, then one to one, and I can get the uh, permanent battery power out of the way. So I finished the uh, permanent battery power and the switch battery power. And actually I, I had it mixed up. I have two switched, one constant. So I was high-fiving myself, hell yeah, high-fives all around. And then I'm looking at you know other wires that I have. And then I realized, I was like, all right, so I had one that for the uh, Mac boost controller that it's gonna go on the uh, passenger side of the, don't, don't mind the hat. It's going on the passenger side of the engine bay next to the turbo. And then I forgot that I need to provide 12 volts to that. So it works by um, ECU output and 12 volts. So I have the output right here in this loom. And then I said I was gonna get 12 volts from this side of the car and I completely forgot about that. So now I have to come in, undo one of the switched 12 volts, uh, run a wire, splice it in and run it out to where I'm gonna have the boost controller mounted. Uh, so let me just undo that and I guess I can start working on this side of the car. I need to mount the O2 sensor and make sure it's going to be run correctly. This whole yellow harness is for the O2 sensor, which is awesome. It's really long. It goes all the way into the uh, engine bay. It actually, I can almost do a loop out to the engine bay back and back up. It's so long. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have the connection for the O2 come into well, now I'll keep it in the engine bay, make it easy. So, all right, let me do this uh, boost controller real quick. All right, redeemed myself, went ahead, added the uh, spliced into the switch 12 volt that's gonna run out the stock location, feed the uh, boost controller. Now I just need to run the pin out for the boost controller, also out to there, uh, also in here. So here I have two fuel pump um, outputs right now I just have the fuel pump on the key for the car so once you switch it to the like accessory position fuel pump turns on I and mean, I don't need anything crazy on it now it's just a single fuel pump so I'll save the output for when I go dual fuel pump I'll have it so the fuel pump turns on the second fuel pump turns on in their boost controlled by the ECU so out of this harness I need to take out the boost controller and the two-step because that's important. I right, went ahead and uh, ran those wires that I said. So I have the red one is the switch 12 volt for the boost controller, white one pin out for boost controller, and the yellow is for the wideband. That's how I'm going to route it. It's pretty ugly that it's yellow. I'm going to probably put some heat wrap on it or that um, I bought some of that stuff that you wrap around it that looks like the, D the DEI stuff, some knockoff. So I'll, I'll use that on that. Kind of trying to figure out where I want the boost controller. I think I figured out a little spot over here. So you see there's a threaded bolt right here on that shock tower. Kind of works out. If I got that right there, it's kind of central to having the turbo there. I can get boost reference. And then out of the boost controller, it can go back down to the wastegate right there. So pretty easy. I'll just have to have a uh, mount made right here, but I think that's where I want it. Nice that there's a pigtail on it. So now I can go ahead and start uh, trimming stuff down to a uh, shorter, more, not permanent, but closer length that I want. Actually, I have a uh, plug that I'm gonna use for this right there, two pin. So actually, I can uh, I can go ahead and pin that, and that way I have those wires there. They won't they won't pull back, and that'll be set. So ECU is power switched. 
everything's hooked up. The only thing that I don't have is the TPS sensor that I've been waiting on. So hopefully that comes in tomorrow and I can uh, kind of go for a start on it. I mean, realistically, I don't see what else is needed. Fuel pump's good. Oh, I need to do grounds. I need to make grounds. Looking at that. I need to make grounds for... I need to ground the head, ground the intake manifold, ground the block, ground the transmission. So that's some other stuff I need to get done before I uh, get it started. Got the battery charging up over here, so it's ready when we go to start. So just waiting on that stuff right now. Pretty, pretty happy with the progress. I can go to sleep now. It's only, I don't know, one in the morning. So sweet, almost there. So I was wrapping up this video, I was moving along, and one thing I forgot that uh, I remembered after the fact. Let me see if I can open this up without hurting myself. All right, so fuel pump is pretty much bolted down. I'm missing a couple bolts that I need to go get. I don't know how they went missing, but just I didn't want anyone thinking this is the final setup for the fuel pump hanger. I'm missing a vent because the tank is gonna be pulling fuel and it needs air to replace where the fuel was or else you get vapor lock. You know, the tank can not, it's not implode. Is it implode where it sucks itself in? Well, either way, you don't want that to happen. So you need to have a vent. The stock system has a vent and I said I was gonna upgrade it and I forgot to do that. So I'll have to do that in the future. But for at least starting and just getting the car running, this will get me by, but it's on my to-do list to get done. Didn't want anyone to think that I, I forgot that part and also need to seal up where the wiring is coming through too. Cutting over to the finished wiring for the boost controller. Got the uh, Deutsch connector, got the DR25 on it, master label, and also did the same for the boost controller itself. DR25 on it. Nice, just gotta make a mount for it. And cut back to wrapping up the video. Back here, I was, uh, I wanted to start the car. Just want to do a rough start, but I'm going to slow down. All right, so I want to button everything up first so it's kind of just ready to go. So what that entails, I need to completely bolt down the intake manifold, put the gasket between the upper and lower manifold, bolt down the throttle body with the gasket, also need to put my uh, drive-by wire delete in. I'll show that. Also, I need to take off the exhaust manifold, put on manifold gaskets, put all the nuts on. I'm also going to heat wrap the manifold. I need to take off the downpipe, heat wrap the downpipe, and I need to plumb the wastegate as well for the boost controller and I need to make all the grounds that I said I was gonna make. So, I think that's it. That's all I can think of right now, just for a, a decent start, so that's the plan. Filming. What is it, John? YouTube, comment, like this video. If you like it, watch some more. If you don't like it, <laughs> 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 I don't know.